Number 51. A sample of 0.562 grams of carbon is burned in oxygen in a bomb calorimeter, producing carbon dioxide. Assume both the reactants and the products are under standard state conditions and that the heat released is directly proportional to the enthalpy of combustion of graphite. The temperature of the calorimeter increases from 26.74 degrees Celsius to 27.93 degrees Celsius. What is the heat capacity of the calorimeter and its contents? Okay, so we're talking about bomb calorimetry here, right? They did say that it's being in a bomb calorimeter. So bomb calorimetry is basically, you know, background on that. It's a, a device in which we combust hydrocarbons, or in this case, just carbon. And these calorimeters produce, or these reactions will produce a lot of energy. So it's just like a heavy duty piece of equipment to, you know, house this combustion reaction. But bomb calorimetry is pretty simple. It comes down to one formula, right? And the formula is this one, right? The heat of the bomb, right? The Q of the bomb equals to the heat capacity, that's capital C, times the change in temp. Now, in this case, they're asking for what's the heat capacity of the calorimeter. So I'm solving for C. That's the heat capacity. So we don't know this. So technically, we should know the two other components. Let's start with the delta T. Now, remember, delta T is the change in temp, right? It's final minus initial. They did tell us that the temperature increased from 26.74 degrees Celsius to 27.93 degrees Celsius. This was my initial, so this is TI, and this was my final temp, TF. So the delta T is always final minus initial. So 27.93 minus 26.74. So whatever that is, right? 27.93 minus 26.74. So I get a delta T of 1.19, and if you wanted units, this is degrees Celsius. Okay, now let's work on this part. I need to find out how much heat was produced in the bomb. Now they did tell me that we had a sample of 0.562 grams of carbon. Okay, so that's gonna be important. And they said that, you know, the heat released is directly proportional to the combustion of graphite. So what I did was I went into the textbook and I found out the delta heat, the delta H, right? The enthalpy, which is delta H, of the combustion of graphite. This carbon is the graphite version, okay? This is not diamond. So when graphite combusts, you will release, which is the negative, 393.5 kilojoules per mole. Now in this case, since we have the information for carbon, I can say that it's kilojoules per mole of carbon. So I'm just going to kind of write this, this out as a sentence. So I'm going to put it on the left-hand side. I'm going to say, for a mole of carbon, this will produce out negative, which just means that it's released. There's no such thing as like a negative energy, 393.5 kilojoules. Now, how many moles of carbon? This just comes from the balanced equation. Since there was one mole of carbon, I can say that there's one mole here, okay? But if there was like a two, right? If there was a two here, I would say two moles of carbon. So just always double check that, guys, okay? So I'm gonna throw this up here. We're gonna need this in a little bit. Now, we need to find a Q. And a Q, remember, is in joules. So I need to kind of get to this kilojoule idea. And I can get there because I can convert from moles to kilojoules. But I am I have a sample of 0 0.562 grams of carbon. Is there a possibility to go from grams to moles? Yeah, there is. Let's do it out. Dimensional analysis time. <laughs> we will never get away. So I got 0 0.562 grams of carbon times by the ratio, grams of carbon goes on the bottom, mole of carbon, mole of carbon, mole, mole of carbon goes on the top. And remember, 
A gram to mole conversion of the same element is the periodic table. So get your periodic tables out, guys, right? Remember, if you're using the periodic table, it's always one mole, and then whatever the mass is of carbon. On mine, it says that it's 12.01. So now I can cancel out the grams of carbon. But I still want to get to joules. Now I'm going to use this relationship that I know times by my other ratio. Throw the unit that I don't want on the bottom. Mole of carbon. And the unit that I do want, let's just put this in blue, right? This would be the kilojoules. And then this is the mole of carbon. So kilojoules are now going to go on the top. So for every one mole of carbon, I will produce out 393.5 degrees, uh, uh, 0.5 kilojoules. So one mole and then 393.5. Now in this case, we don't really care about the negative, right? Remember, the negative just means that it's released. So if you want to put the negative, that's fine with me. But at some point, we have to see, you know, are we going to put negatives or are we not? It's kind of like an understanding and not really a negative value. So let's just say that it's a negative. Sure. Okay, so 0.562 divided by 12.01 times by 393.5. And I get roughly negative 18.4. One, four, and now that's in kilojoules. So this is the amount of heat that is going to be released negative when this combustion is happening. I still need it in joules though. Well, we know how to go from kilojoules to joules, right? All we gotta do is just times by a thousand. So this would be basically 18,414 joules. And now I found out the Q. How many joules? 18,414. Now all we got to do is just solve for the specific heat. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just put this down here. Right? This is all one thing. And now I have room if I just put like a little line over here. I'm going to do my formula. Q equals capital C times delta T. Okay, so I got 18,414 equals C times 1.19, right? That was the delta T that we found out. Divide by 1.19, and we should get our answer. See, the actual, the actual equation isn't hard. It's just finding the components. That's what makes chemistry a little bit tricky. But we got it, right? So 18.41, no, 18,414 divided by, divided by 1.19. Did they say what units they wanted it in? No, not really. I got 15.5. So I'll say either, we'll say, we'll do it in two units just in case they wanted it in kilojoules. So with three sig figs, it should be 15, 1,500 joules per degree Celsius. That's the uh, heat capacity if it was in joules per degree Celsius. But since this is a really, really big number, maybe we should put it in kilojoules. So I'll just divide this by 1,000. And this is the same thing by saying 15.5 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Either one is the same answer. Just depends on, you know, what's the preference or what, if your question says specifically kilojoules per degree Celsius or joules degree Celsius, in this case, heat capacity, they didn't say, but yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. That will help us out. Thank you so much. And I will see you in future lessons. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.